Hi, I'm Debbie Hughes and I'm a craft and card making blogger over at my blog Lime Doodle Design and I'm here today to talk to you about creating engaging images for Pinterest. I've been using Pinterest for a long time and for the majority of that time when I produced a blog post I would simply pin the first image from that blog post. I would use the hover over it button, make sure there was some content in the content box, choose which board I wanted to pin to and pin it. Even using those simple tactics, I found that Pinterest was driving traffic to my blog and I wanted to engage those people more, find out what it was that they found appealing when looking at a Pinterest stream and I wanted to do the same for my own media. I read that having a text overlay really grabs people's attention when viewing a Pinterest stream and I started by having a circle, a translucent circle with some text within it and although that was more engaging, I did feel that for my particular blog, that with light photographs and a light background, that the wording, it was difficult to get the balance right, that it wasn't dominating the picture too much. I did want people to be able to see my images. So I went back to more reading and also to investigating the Pinterest stream. And in a stream such as a highly competitive one, such as food blogging, I found that the pins that caught your eye with the long portrait pins, often with text incorporated between pictures, often multiple pictures, that there was often a block of colour, and that, well, those were the things that caught my eye and that I wanted to produce for my own pictures. Keeping all of this in mind, I now have these long portrait pins for my blog posts. I have a one at the top, followed by a block of colour with some text writing, a middle photograph and a bottom photograph. I normally produce these three photographs for my projects, one looking at the card straight on, one with a little bit of detail and then one looking from overhead. So I was already taking these pictures and all I've done is just incorporated them into this big long pin that hopefully will grab people's attention when they view it in their, in their Pinterest stream. For these pins I use a clipping mask template that I created in Photoshop. The template is 900 pixels wide by 2500 pixels high at a resolution of 72. Each of the black boxes represents a photograph, so by choosing the photographs, I've got my three photographs already edited, I can drag the first photograph onto the template and then by reordering the layers, by reordering the layers I can move the layer one template up until it is above the top black box and then I can right click and choose create clipping mask. Now the image is clipped to the area of the black box and I can move that image until it's incorrectly in place and there's no black showing. I'll quickly run through doing the other two. This is the detail photograph I like to take and I can drag that over, reorder the layer. This time this layer number two needs to be just above the black box labelled middle and then I can right click, create clipping mask and then move the image into place. And then finally for the third image Again, I can go up, select the photograph, click and drag it across to the template, then reorder the layers so that layer 3 is above the black box labelled bottom, and then right click and create clipping mask. Move it into place, and that is simply how I create these layered um, three tall images for my Pinterests. The only thing left to do is to re-colour the text box and change the text wording. To do that you choose the eyedropper tool and by clicking on the image you can choose any of the colours that you would like, whether it be from a plant or an, you know the blue sky or part of the leaf. Wherever you click you can pick up that colour and then finally when you've chosen a colour that you're happy with, that you feel is going to tone well with your picture, you can click OK and then you can go up to the paint bucket tool Make sure that your colour layer is selected and then drop the paint bucket tool onto the colour layer and changing the colour. The only thing left to do then is to change the text. So selecting the text tool and making sure that the text layer is also selected, you can then go in and edit the text. And when I was making this, um, this card, I was using Zig Clean Colour brush markers. And so I want my readers to know that that's what this pin is about. So I've retyped the text and then I can move it into place. It's slightly too large for the, for the area, so I can uh, reselect the text tool, make sure everything's highlighted, and then go back in and change the size. Actually, it's at 90 at the moment, probably 80 will be sufficient to just reduce the size of the lettering slightly, 
and then I can move that lettering into place again so that it's sitting nicely within the text area. So that's my very quick run through at how I use Adobe Photoshop to create engaging images for Pinterest. However, if you haven't got Photoshop or you're not comfortable with clipping masks, then um, I would try canva.com where they have um, social media layouts, templates that you can use, and they have grids that you can select and drag onto the template and then drag your own images into the template. So if you wanted three images or maybe you want two images and a color block, you can play around with the layouts in Canva and, all of, and achieve all of that within that design. I hope I've given you something to think about. I'm aiming to be at the webinar, but as I'm in the UK, I think the webinar is airing right in the middle of the night, so I might not make it. But if I don't, I will try and answer any of your questions the best way I can.